Since June 2007, the Network Culture Project at the University of Southern California has been exploring opportunities for public good in virtual worlds. During the course of the past year, they have been asking how virtual activities can affect both on- and offline communities. When they issued a challenge to the residents of Second Life to build projects that answer that very question, three finalists emerged, selected by judges and community vote. Our winning awardees for the Second Life and the Public Good Community Challenge are Ability Commons, Texas Obesity Research Center, and Native Lands. Finalist Gentle Heron of Virtual Ability is seeking to actively integrate the able-bodied population into her outreach efforts. She calls them the not yet disabled. As we age, more and more and more of us will have a disability. And so it's extremely helpful to see what life is like when you will be disabled. Finalist Nanny Kao of Virtual Native Land says her group will be relying on recognized tribal authorities to determine how Native American culture should be presented in SL. Educational institutions, libraries, museums that have been approved by the tribes. Ultimately, we would prefer to have the tribes represent themselves to sort of offset that misrepresentation that is so widespread and so damaging. The Texas Obesity Research Center has recently kicked off the International Health Challenge. Serena Felissimo says avatars will be able to practice healthful behaviors virtually. You can practice different types of physical activity. And when you watch your avatar doing that, there actually are data that suggests that there are mirror neurons in your brain that are stimulated the same way as if you were doing that in the real world. All finalists believe they can make an impact that spans well beyond the virtual. Participating in virtual reality is very supportive for people. There are benefits that you can see in personality development, in skill development, many things that we can transfer from Second Life back into real life. Virtual Worlds technology allows us to share common experiences and discuss things that are important to the Native American community over widely dispersed geographic areas. It allows us to represent ourselves accurately. USC is Associate Professor Doug Thomas, a.k.a. Dr. Ludovico, confirms the significance of virtual worlds by laying out four key aspects that make him an ideal place for public good efforts. The first key aspect is awareness. You can raise a lot of issues. You can also do it in really unique ways. So awareness can be something that's promoted by the use of art, by creating architecture, and so on. The second aspect is dissemination. Because it is a networked environment, information travels incredibly fast. You can get information out to a large number of people in a very diverse set of contexts and with a lot of texture and detail. Organization and action is the third aspect. You don't have the problem of coordinating around geography. It's easy to get people together from all over the world. And because they're all coordinated in the same virtual space, you can engage in pretty sophisticated joint coordinated action. And finally, there's the aspect of intercultural dialogue and exchange. Because you're dealing with actual people in different language communities, in different cultures, you can have a dialogue which allows you to have access to situations, contexts that you may not have before. Professor Thomas says these methods have already begun to revolutionize the way users of 3D spaces communicate. The idea that you're actually there together makes a huge difference. You're leveraging the idea of the network. And because these are worlds in which you can build the environment to reflect who you are and what you believe in, you can actually engage with people in a way which is much deeper than something like a chat room, email, or even in the old days, pen pals would be. It is precisely these possibilities, says Connie Yowell, education director at the MacArthur Foundation, which brought the Chicago-based organization to virtual worlds and fund, among other groups, the Network Culture Project. Efforts like the challenge suggest that virtual worlds provide a significant potential for social benefit and learning, and we hope that philanthropy can play some role in shaping that potential. So down the line, when avatars have become commonplace extensions of ourselves on the 3D web, and we define community without the restrictions posed by physical proximity, There may be a little gray in my virtual hair, but hopefully I will still be surrounded by global citizens who are shaping virtual worlds into social places where public good can thrive. Our children will be using networked imagination and knowledge, the seeds of which we are laying today. From the central coast of real-life California, I'm Draxter Dupre. (laughs) 